Revival of F, Fukatsu no F, Resurrection F, or whatever you want to call it. It's not it's not only one of the worst Dragon Ball movies ever made, but also one of the worst Dragon Ball arcs ever made. Before we address the differences in adaptations, let's talk about the story, what it's and the common flaws. Turns out Revival of F is about Freezer coming back. That is the premise. Freeza returning again with a power up, that's all. Um, this alone uh, this alone raises a bunch of um, red flags. Um, Battle of Gods, as awful it was, set up a new universe with countless possibilities for an encounters. Instead we get a movie just about fighting of a, of a resurrected bad guy that even someone like Goten could beat easily. But it's okay because Freezer gains a power up that makes him stronger than Goku and as strong as foe. But we getting ahead of ourselves, let's take a few steps time yeah, shall we? A few steps back. Freezer is one of the characters that has been brought back the most often. Even after this movie premiered, Frieza is keep coming back. He is no longer a threat and Toei can stop milking him. I have seen countless people defending this because other times were not canon. That's why people forgetting Mecha Frieza was in the actual fucking manga. But now it's time... This time that Freezer is back. How is it this time, right? How is it this time that Freezer came back? Back then it was uh, because the gates of hell were opening, ghost warriors, surviving as the destruction of the planet and so on. This time Freezer was brought back with the Dragon Balls by new officers of the Freezer army whose names are not even worth remembering. As the reason why they brought back Freezer was because they needed his leadership, which translates to power in this case. So they used the Peel of Gang, no, somehow knowing they know about the Dragon Balls and wasting the wishes of Shenlong, they bring back Freezer in pieces. There have been arguments about why Freezer was back in chunks instead of. Um, his complete body or ashes, as well as why he was brought back at all despite the time restriction of how much time passes the wish uh, to grant the wish. But Dragon Ball's uh, revival policies, regardless of Dender stuff, uh, Dender's buff make no sense. Also, Shannon didn't really seem to want to bring Frieza back and scammed the underlings, if anything. As the real reason they did bring back Freezer, like that to lure him away from Earth so he doesn't get one-shotted by Piccolo. And the problem is despite all characters being fast enough to arrive where Freezer was resurrected and not a Shenlong was summoned, and nobody bothered to go and finish the job. In other words, Gohan, Piccolo and Krillin etc were dumb for the sake of the plot. There's no way in hell these people forget how dangerous someone like Frieza is, even if they are vastly strong at this point. And Frieza got put together with new technology in the Frieza army. The interesting thing is that Freezer revert back to his first form for some reason and has his armor back. After hearing B Boo was defeated by Goku, Freezer decided to train, which apparently he never did in his life. And this is where shit goes out the window. Apparently, Freezer has no training experience. We don't see what he does, but somehow manages to get strong enough to fight against the likes of Goku in just four months. <coughs> there are so many problems with this. 
first freezer will surpass many vastly stronger opponents to this point. We are talking about Piccolo, Cell, Dabu, uh, Gotenks, Ultimate Gohan. Those are exponentially stronger than Freezer Saga characters. To just surpass them with off screen training and beyond is beyond retarded. And second, if all Freezer had to do is train to get strong, then the entire point of the destroying planet Vegeta and fears the Super Saiyan have been meaningless. If Frieza just trained for 4 months after losing against Goku, he would have one shot at Trunks with a yarn. This devalued all of Frieza Saga and the Super Saiyan transformation. Meanwhile, we get a glimpse of Goku and Vegeta training under this. One of the worst things about Revival of F is turning Goku's strength into a weakness evaluating all his training on the Mr. Popo, which didn't just consist key sensing. Goku can sense movement, and while in a calm stage, he can dodge without thinking. Kinda like what UI tried to do. We will get to this later, as uh, one of the worst plot twists, uh, plot devices, which get hinted at. Apparently, uh, Freezer appears with his entire army on Earth. This is the next problem um, of the movies. The uh, supporting cast is completely worthless. Freezer is uh, purposely just watching his father's soldiers get slaughtered. Many people think it's great because, but honestly, it's just pointless filler to pad out the running time. None of these things needed to happen. Piccolo can just release a distractor destruction wave and kill everybody in an instant. And once that is done, they just summon Goku and Vegeta by powering up. Then they just end up cheerleading for Goku and Vegeta again. And after Freezer transforms to his f um, into his final form, we get a bit of a fight until the next terrible thing happens. Goku doesn't go Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, or Super Saiyan God, but to a completely new transformation called, <coughs> and you get this, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, one of the dumbest names for a transformation ever. I address this um, by the name of Super Saiyan God is dumb and how I predicted Dragon Ball Super to suck. It's not clear why Goku went to this form of all things. Fan believed, fans believed that Goku was using God Key in his base state and then turning Super Saiyan turned blue, turned blue because God Key for some reason. It's just makes, it just makes no sense how Freezer could pull out such a feat but it gets worse. So, Golden Freezer. Goku, who turned into a recolor of Super Saiyan, will fight a recolor of Freezer's true form, where, un ironically, he is referring himself as Golden Freezer. Am I reading a fanfiction? Is this, dra is this official Dragon Ball? Toriyama wrote this, right? A recolor of Super Saiyan called Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan and a recolor form of Final Form Freezer called Golden Freezer. Obviously there are ever so slight differences you only notice if you pay close attention to. Uh, the, co the choices of color also come out of nowhere. It just feels like Freezer Saga uh, rehashed in a fanfiction. Freezer has the same weaknesses as his 100% form, which is the reason why he fails to beat Goku despite being stronger. Goku trained on the three gods and now with Freeze, who is the master of builds, um, yet he almost loses to Freezer who just trained 
for four months off screen. Pathetic. Goku, who hated Frieza and threatened him to never appear again before his eyes, or he would kill him for good, decides to let Frieza alive and suggests he trains again so they can fight one more time. Uh, it renders pointless everything Goku went through in the Freezer saga and their values Freezer as a threat. Uh, Freezer in this movie isn't a threat. Uh, yes, he is stronger than our heroes, but there's no tension because <coughs> the following reasons. We know Goku will train Oop at the end of C, which is after Super, so the entire confrontation is meaningless. Uh, so, as you know, uh, Dragon Ball Super is filler, so is the movie Revival of F. And next reason. Uh, Bills and Viz, who are stronger, are on Earth and they can always interrupt the fights. Um, people say that uh, they won't interfere because um, they are neutral. Uh, that's a lot of bullshit and you will see that they will intervene. So. Just them existing um, ruins this entire fight. Vegeta is watching from the sidelines. If Frieza were really that dangerous, they could always just fuse. So Goku and Vegeta are just taking turns. Both of them can beat the crap out of Frieza if they just teamed up. This is why the next scene is entirely pointless. Goku getting one shotted by that freezer of the Fissa, who is probably not even stronger than Ginyu. Goku from Z would have seen that one shot shotted and um, would have never been one shotted by a nobody like that, even in his base form. In this movie this scene has countless times is this in the, the movie the scene is countless times worse because the beam comes from the front within Goku's eyesight and he should be able to at least dodge or tank it with his increase by increasing his key. He was also in Super Saiyan Blue so how did he get one shotted by a freaking laser? Uh, this led to uh, plenty of this is uh, totally a prime candidate for a meme like you can make a bunch of memes out of that one scene where Goku gets one-shotted by pretty much anyone. Revival of F artificially nerfed Goku by making him look like an amateur in front of everyone. I can't believe Frieza even thought that was a good idea. The beam has to be paused by plot. <laughs> the most powerful MacGuffin in Dragon Ball. Just imagine as they used it against Broly. If it only existed for letting Freeze Vegeta use and um, show off that he can total uh, can use this totally original Super Saiyan form, do not see it, against Freeza. I remember fans being amazed, uh, including Vegeta fans. To me this is a pathetic scene that existed to humiliate Vegeta if anything. Vegeta was at full strength, beating up a weakened freezer and still loses. You see Vegeta blows a uh, freezer blows up the planet, clearly killing Vegeta while he apparently survived. I'm not a Vegeta fan, but even I feel cheated considering Toriyama wanted to give v Vegeta fans something to look forward to. But it's okay with just use time reversal to allow Goku to finish Frieza after being fully healed. That's one of the worst ways to end a story and devalued Frieza's existence even more. It feels like uh, it was just comic relief. Uh, he came countless times. He became countless times stronger, but it. He felt less threatening than Pilaf. <coughs> More than Dragon Ball turned Freeza into Team Rocket. He appears, loses, appears again, rinse and repeat. He poses no threat. 
That is why Revival of F sucks. But which one is worse? The movie or the series? In the movie it is established that Shizame or Shizami, whatever his name is called, is Dodoria level and this Tamago guy is Sabon level. Tamago isn't even relevant in the movie because he's dead. Uh, why is it important? Because when the screenshots appear leaking the movies, we saw Shizame beats the crap out of Piccolo, which led to many believe he is related to Dabwa. Maybe he's Dabwa's brother working for the Freezer Army or some bullshit. Turns out he is just a weakling, but somehow beats the crap out of Piccolo, who fused with Kami and trained in the time chamber. That means Piccolo got heavily nerfed in this movie, that he lost to someone at Dodoria's level. And Gohan had to jump in and save him. Gohan also got nerfed in this movie. He needs to turn Super Saiyan to def defeat this guy. Can you imagine Gohan having Super Saiyan to go Super Saiyan again? Um, imagine Go Gohan having to go Super Saiyan against Dodoria. This movie is a joke. Later he gets knocked out by one punch from first from Freezer and needs a Zendu. Pathetic. Meanwhile in Super, um, they beat up. They get beat up by Targamo. Then some bullshit happens with Ginyu body swapping with him having uh, that guy say word, the word change. Did a child come up with this? And somehow Ginyu controlling the body made him even stronger. Gohan had to go Super Saiyan to beat him. Then Gohan gets utterly humiliated by first from Freezer, who fired beams from his finger and needed to be protected by Piccolo for the biggest coke out death in Omnimi. Um, Super did the great, uh, their hardest to make Go Piccolo and Gohan as pathetic as possible. Remember Pi Gohan getting stronger when he's angry? While well, Vegeta impressed builds after seeing Gohan a uh, Bulma hit Gohan who has been known for rage boost could barely keep his Super Saiyan form to call out his dad and Vegeta to save him oh yeah Super Bowser to make Krillin pathetic by making him scared the fuck up, scared as fuck because of freezer soldiers Krillin had was already a character full of weaknesses and just adding something like PTSD is unnecessary, especially when the four the soldiers are apparently weaker than Master Roshi. There was no point in that, and Krillin and Tian uses the Kikoho or Tri-Beam against nobodies. Then you have the fight. Then you have the fight. Round 1, Goku vs. Final from Freezer. Uh, the movie looked beautiful, but the anime looked like total garbage. The thing uh, that was annoying was Vegeta suddenly attacking Goku because he wanted to fight Freezer next. That was out of place, but was there a point in taking turns against someone weaker? That was just dumb. Round 2, when both transformed into the OG transformation, do not see, uh, the quality became worse. The movie added shitty CGI, and while the anime looked like total garbage, uh, there weren't many good scenes. I liked the one inch punch of Goku, and that's about it. And it's funny how Freezer had. Is such a massive stamina issue of not being used to the form, but then fighting doesn't nearly destroy the planet despite the huge power. Goku and Vegeta um, Freezer were stronger than uh, they were in Battle of Saiyan Goku in Battle of Gods, so why wasn't the universe getting destroyed? It made no sense. The anime fixes the laser is seen somewhat by letting Goku get hit from behind while he powered down into his space form, but
but it's still a stupid scene. And this time I've also got a nerf set beat. He can revert it to a certain point, but that doesn't change the fact that this arc was meaningless. So which one is better? Um, I tell you which, the manga, because it skipped the arc completely. I remember when people were hyped that the movie was going to be out. We will finally see Vegeta turn Super Saiyan God and beat a god from another universe. Instead we got a filler movie. And the other non-canon weren't restricted much because they weren't meant to fit into the continuity. But Revival of F and Battle of Gods meant to fit to the manga, yet they feel like pointless filler. Uh, Freezer will be relevant in the Tournament of Power, uh, re irrelevant as in quotation marks. But that brings other problems like Freezer training in hell somehow. Why didn't he do that in the first place? Freezer was weaker when he came back to life and Revival of F, but he comes back even stronger. Um, Super is awful, the movie was awful, I can't say which is better because neither fixed a key problem like in Battle of Gods, but how did they stack up to Battle of Gods? The answer is simple, to the uh, super versions they are inferior, but Revival of F is better than the movie of Battle of Gods. Uh, the reason is, the jokes are actually funny and the movie version of Revival of F, F had some action which is more than I can, I can give um, Battle of Gods credit for. The super arc of Battle of Gods wins because of the ending.